Welcome to the little tea time. Y'all ready? Welcome to the little tea time. Oh yeah. Welcome to the little tea time. Who listen? Welcome to the little tea time. All right. Welcome to the little tea. Welcome to the little tea. Welcome to the little tea. Welcome to the little tea time. Welcome to the little tea time. Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, good people. It is I, Jarek, a.k.a. Jari Steve, your favorite published author's favorite published author. And this is another installment of A Little Tea Time. Thank y'all for tuning in and for hanging out with your boy. All right. So we're going to get into it. Today is Tuesday. And um, I am excited about tonight's show with Mr. Michael Billings. Um, so we're going to just get straight into it. Shout out to Nicola Perfect Peach. Still working on my, working on the, the next few tea bags I got left of that. And shout out to Nicola Perfectly Mint. Same here. Still working on those few bags of tea as well. So, just to let y'all know, I do drink these teas, y'all. I do not think the funk when I create these teas for the shows, all right? So, with that being said, y'all, if y'all drink Bigelow tea, send them some love, send them some peace and blessings from me, as I am as well. And um, I'm going to keep it going, all right? With that being said, today's word of the day is... Deterge. Deterge is a verb from the Latin early 17th century, and it means to clean thoroughly. Now, I don't even have a sentence for that, but I will say this. Deterge your ears clearly to hear tonight's show, all right? So, deterge is the word of the day. Learn to apply that to your English language speaking vocabulary. All right? Got it. Cool. Song of the week is going to Three Go Trip with his single, Can't Help Myself, right now doing great numbers since he has released it to YouTube. Um, I'm excited about this single because Three Go Trip is definitely making some power moves with this song right now. And I'm a fan of what he's doing. So I want to encourage you guys to get out there. Check out the music video for Can't Help Myself. If y'all seen the music video, definitely want you guys to go and download the song. And put it in your iPods. Put it on your phones. Put it on your tablets. Put it on your laptops. Get it in your life. And check out Ego Trip. Can't Help Myself. Right. Cool. Um, shout outs to Saucy Sonya Spices with her book right now. Chef Saucy's Five Ass Cookbook available right now on the site at saucysonyaspices.com. If you have not yet shopped over there to the site, definitely would love for you guys to go and shop the site. Use my coupon code A Little Time One Word and Receive 5% off of your purchases when you use the coupon code, all right? So, y'all get out there, get that book, and get into it with Chef Saucy's Fire Ass Cookbook. So, get that. I'm going to continue to shout out music artists Willie Loke and Dizzy D with their single, Man Cry, available right now. If y'all have not heard the music yet, y'all definitely are asleep at the wheel. I definitely would love to encourage you guys to get into these these artists because they're artists from my hometown. They're telling real stories through their music, and they're keeping it funky. So I want to encourage you guys to get out there, cop that, listen to that, and get into that. All right. Um, Got to send a shout-out to Sweet Nay. I know that she has posed a thick thigh challenge 
on her Instagram to all of her supporters and to every woman around the world who listens to Thick Thighs from Sweet May. Y'all get in on that Thick Thigh Challenge that she has issued on her Instagram. And y'all can listen to that music available right now on YouTube and everywhere where music is available, right? So y'all get into Thick Thighs from Sweet May. Gotta continue to shout out Shayna D Music with her single and the music video for Pack It Up. Also doing great numbers right now on YouTube. So if y'all have not yet gotten into it, definitely want to encourage you guys to check out the music video. If you have not yet gotten the single, definitely want to get with Shayna D Music and get that single. So y'all get into that, all right? Tap in. Um, so the music, not the music video, so the track for Above Ground came out this weekend. And again, Three Go Trip and Official Patience. This this single go hard. It go hard. Um, I I I've already shared it to my Facebook and to my Instagram. If y'all have not yet gotten into this music from Three Go Trip and Official Patience, man, y'all are sweet. The song is definitely a message of positivity. And we want to encourage people through music and songs. So I definitely want to encourage you guys. If y'all have not yet gotten into this music, check this music out. Let them know how y'all feel about it. If you support them, go out there and cop that and get into it for them. And continue to just support positive messages, y'all. Continue to support positive messages, right? Um, shout outs to recording artist Honey. That's H-O-N-E, the number seven in the spelling. She has her show coming up at the Afro Soul Music Festival, June the 10th in Las Vegas. So if y'all have not yet gotten ready for that, y'all definitely want to get your tickets ready for that show. And go on out there and support Honey and show her some love, all right? Shout out to you, Honey. I guess I definitely would love to have you here on a little tea time. So if y'all are familiar with H-O-N-E-Y, the number seven, honey, get in contact with her and have her contact me here on a little tea time so we can get her booked. All right, y'all? So make that happen. Um, Marche 318 she definitely doing some things right now. I know that she's promoting Better Days right now on Spotify, and I know that this album that she has out right now is doing numbers. Um, I am such a fan of also what she's doing, and I just want to continue to encourage you guys to support her. She also has a really great sound. She's definitely one for the street, and she's definitely kicking y'all with some shit that if you are not familiar with her sound, if you're not familiar with her brand, definitely would love to encourage y'all to get into it um, and just support what these artists are bringing to y'all, all right? So y'all can find all these artists' music available right now on iTunes and Apple Music. And to all of the other artists out there who I support on a little tea time, y'all keep it coming. Keep that music coming. Let's continue to pump this music and keep getting it out there to the masses, all right? So shout out to everybody out there who I support here on a little tea time. Um, with that being said, we're going to move on to the Ratchet City Blues documentary with Cherie Gray of Lumpy Grits Artistry. Um, I am still, again, going to continue to promote this because I am supposed to be a part of this doc that she is shooting. And I am very excited about what we are about to bring to you guys. So if y'all are fans of music, if you are fans of history from your hometown, this would definitely be something that y'all would want to catch and something that y'all would want to tune into. All right, so y'all stay tuned for that. And shout out to Cherie of Lumpy Grits, right? Um, so I caught this little tea today that I had to share. Shout out to NBA royalty, Grant Hill, who released his book, Game, and Autobiography, available right now where books are sold. Um, I'm a fan of Grant Hill because... He is the husband of Tamia, and she's one of my favorite singers. And he is NBA royalty. So we have to continue to support and promote 
positive messages and positive people within the community. All right. So y'all get out there and check that out. On to the events shout out um, this weekend. If you are able to get out to the farmer's market and you receive SNAP benefits or food stamps, they will be matching customers with $20 when you shop at the farmer's market. So do not hesitate to get out to the farmer's market and go in and get y'all some fresh fruit and vegetables to link and share with your families. All right. Um, also, the Office Hub presents Wednesday, June the 15th, the second bourbon business money and mimosas event featuring Fred Moss the fourth, Colette Delaney, and Vincel Holmes. Come eat, engage, and network and enjoy music by Jay Brown. And the event will be from 5 30 to 8 30 at 331 Milam Street, Suite 200. Now, I am going to be promoting this event because I believe in what they're doing. And I would love to be in the building for the event. But I will be here doing a little tea time. So I will not be able to make it out. But I'm definitely going to encourage you guys, if y'all are familiar with the Bourbon Business Money and Mimosas event, June the 15th on a Wednesday, be in the building, go out there and promote your brand, talk about your business, and continue to lift and elevate you guys. Continue to lift and elevate. Also, in less than two weeks, the pop-up and pose event it's going down in Minden at the Minden Civic Center at 520 Broadway Street from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. Um, I will be at this event doing some poetry from my book that won her contest and I am definitely looking forward to all that she has gearing up because I know she has a fashion show I know that she's gonna have me doing poetry I know that she's gonna also have a number of things going on and it's going to be a family field event so you guys are encouraged to be down in Minden for the event so y'all stay tuned for that all right um on to my Facebook follower birthdays happy birthday to Charlotte and happy birthday to La Shunette. happy birthday to y'all and just in case y'all know, we do have more shows coming up this week. So y'all stay tuned for other shows with more guests this week. Okay. With that being said, I am excited to bring in this guest tonight. Um, I have been hearing great things about what he's doing in the community. And I thought that it would be really cool to bring him in. So without further ado... I would love to introduce you guys and reintroduce you to others, Mr. Michael Billings. So, Mike, if you're ready, I'm going to bring you in. We're going to have some fun here on a little tea time. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Good. Thanks for having me. Yes, welcome to a little tea time. Welcome. So, um, Mike, I found out about your facility just through the community. Okay. And I began to reach out to you because I thought what you're doing is some very exciting shit. It's some exclusive shit. Thank you. And to have you here in a little tea time to talk about it, it's really cool. Let's do it. So we're going to dive right in. Um, Mike, tell my viewers about yourself. Uh, my name is Michael Billing. I work at the base of Owen. Africa for a little while, uh, two years, lived in Taiwan, learned a few languages, uh, lived in uh, West Texas in the oil field. Then I came back to Shreveport. And when I got okay. back, I came to Spain, tried some new 
So Africa and Taiwan? Yes, I was in uh, Africa for two years as a uh, where I learned self fluent. On peut parler en français, il n'y a pas de problème. And after I learned some language, learned that language, I started to pick up languages and I moved to uh, Taiwan to study Mandarin for you. Tough, tough. What made you come back to the states after going out there? Uh, well, I, mean, I, I love, uh, I love. I travel mostly, and everybody else was doing the same thing, different. And I did. Every continent, I, all the people that I spoke with, were all pretty much the same. Different levels of poverty, opportunity, but more or less the same people trying to get through today and all the challenges of today. And I learned that it was really beautiful how many different ways there are to do the same thing. Which Love that. Uh, Love that. Love it. So the next question is when you are not working, what do you do for fun? Right now I'm working a lot. Uh, I play Past years, I played for rugby. I really love art, uh, the arts, music, uh, fine art, theater, and I'm really lucky to be downtown to support now. There's so much going on. Uh, there's just so much going on. So I like to be exposed. I like to learn. Okay, um, we're kind of having a little technical difficulty with your with your um, sound. You kind of keep going in and out, but you're good. You're doing good. Is this better? Perfect. Gotcha. So tell the people what inspired you to develop your idea for where you are right now. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot. Uh, I'm pretty fortunate. I come from really amazing parents. Uh, my parents taught me to work hard and. If you wanted something, build it, build it. You can have anything you want, go do it. Yeah. Uh, my dad, he has a corn maze uh, in North Shreveport called Dixie Corn Maze. And they've been yeah. doing that for about 20 years. So I had a Her ton of exposure to alternative farming, uh, bringing uh, agriculture into the city. Uh, so that was a big, uh, a big inspiration. My business partner is my mom. You can always trust your mom. Uh, she's... She's taught me how to travel. She's a peace builder. She spent a lot of time in Nigeria doing conflict resolution. And uh, between the two of them, I was just never afraid to try something new. Love that. Love that. So how did you decide when to establish your brand? What was that question again? How did you decide when to establish your brand? My brand? With your company. Uh... Well, my dad, he gave, me the, I, he gave me the idea of hydroponics, and I traveled for about two years, uh, really all over the world, uh, studying farms, techniques, technology, marketplaces. Uh, most of what I have, it's not too uncommon to find it in big cities. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I wanted here in Shreveport. Like, I don't think we should have to be behind 20 years all the time. So in, at least in this neck of the woods, we're, we're, we're up to speed. Um, I decided to go all out and build something that you would find in New York or Austin, something that was really cool, cutting edge, uh, really organic and clean. Uh, and I just didn't want to settle for anything less. I wanted to report and if I was going to build it, I wanted to build it right. Yes. I saw your interview on the news a couple of yeah. months back. When I saw the interview on the news, I said, I don't know how I'm going to get him on the show. I'm oh, geez, on man, all you have to do is ask. <laughs> yeah, I started digging around. I started digging around. And I've, uh, I've, I've learned a lot from my community. Uh, there's some other, you, for example, uh, I'm going to, do you mind if I do a little shout out to a buddy of mine, a huge inspiration, Demetrius. Uh, he's building things, creating things. Uh, there's just some really cool people in our community who are not afraid and they're putting it out on the line and I, and I wanted to be a part of that. Yes, I love it. And that's Demetrius with 318 Makes, right? Yes. Yes, 
I went to an event he had a couple of weeks ago. I'm still trying to get him on my show. He is amazing. That man is like Superman right now. He is. He is, and, and I feel bad for mentioning that name because there's a dozen right behind him that I can mention. Uh, but Shreveport has a really cool generation coming up, and I don't know if we're millennials or generate whatever we're called, whatever the forty year olds are called. We're we're millennials. Well, all right, then the millennials we're killing it. Uh, we're 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 stepping up. Uh, we're taking responsibility for our communities. We're we're investing, and we're showing what we're capable of. And I think that's really cool. Yes, and I think people should get a a, a little tour. Of yeah, itself. absolutely. But we'll we'll get into that a little bit more. Okay. We're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about your 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 actual brand. So, how have your priorities changed since you started your business? Have what changed? How have your priorities changed? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you can't start a business if you're not willing to give 100 percent more. Uh, you have to be able to invest more than you're willing to invest. Spend yes. more hours working than you want to work. Give up on all the trips that you want to go to, but it's yeah. worth it. I mean, I have a farm now that I built, and people cool. are enjoying amazing food. And, uh, it was totally worth the sacrifice. I would do it all over again. Yes. It, it's amazing because when I saw your story on the news and about the hydroplaning, I was like, man, this man just, just boosted this city into like the, th the 31st century. Well, it's, like, it's, uh, one of the things I've learned is how cool it is that with techniques, you can grow food where food doesn't normally grow. Yes. And over the last couple of years, uh, Emma and I, we've proven that 2,500 square feet is enough space to grow food for your neighborhood. And yeah. ultimately, our goal is to have farms all over the city, all, especially all the, the adjudicated and unwanted buildings and properties that are just wasting space. We can turn those into greenhouse farms. And uh, I, I think we should be traveling a couple of blocks to go to your neighborhood hydroponic farm and get year-round produce. Uh, yes. We shouldn't necessarily be going to the box stores. Yes. And I feel like, too, we we should be working better at having fresher food. Yeah. We should definitely continue to work with that. Um, I, I just started working at a company that I cannot talk about here on the show, but I'm going to be out in the community this summer and and building gardens in the community. Yeah. And learn how to grow fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and it's it's exciting because it's something that i did not think i would ever do that's but awesome that's awesome congratulations cool. thank you thank you it's really cool when when you get to see the process of how you can actually grow your own food yes it, it makes you take a little bit of more pride in what you put in your body yes yes and clean food yeah. is medicine Yes, and that's what we fail to understand as a culture of people. What you put in your body, it's fuel for your body. Yes, yeah. You have now, I, I, learned, I learned a really big lesson. I mean, I saw that in Africa, but a lot of the folks were eating for survival, you know, not so much anything else. But food was very important, and what they did put in their body was meaningful because it was perhaps the only meal that they were going to have that day. So they made sure they had everything in there. And when I went to Taiwan, uh, food is really important. Uh, actually, most countries that I've traveled to, food is prioritized. Uh, when, we, when we get that fresh produce and those vitamins and those minerals, uh, and it was picked a few blocks away, not a few hundred miles away, uh, it, it not only fuels us what we need for the energy, but it helps our joints and our, our circulatory system and our, all of our systems. Clean yes. food is medicine. Yes, and as a, a, a working vegan, yeah, I'm learning. Well, well uh, I'm glad you're on this adventure. I'll help any way that I can. Oh, yeah, I'm taking all the advice. <laughs> okay. I found these, um, these, these vegan cookies, man, that help. Oh yeah, we, and there's some amazing food. I used to think that vegan or vegetarian was short for didn't taste good, but uh, 
no, I, most of our products at our store, uh, we have dressings from uh, Harris Daniels and Brandon Suter, and they're vegan and vegetarian. And they are some of the best products I've ever had. Yes. Clean, yes. fresh. Absolutely the best shit. It's the best shit. And, and, and the funny thing happened today, and I'm going to talk about it. One of my coworkers, she, I think she was trying to make a joke. And she was like, I got some ribs that I bought just for you. And I was like, oh, you can take those home with you. I don't want them. Are you, are you vegetarian? I'm working on being a vegetarian. Like, I'm, I'm actually eating more vegetables. Yeah. It's... It's like I, I'm learning how to actually cook better food. Yeah. And I've been working at this for the last few months. I'm a, I'm not vegetarian, but uh, I can say I'm a vegetable base. That's what I yeah. primarily eat the vegetables. Um, it makes a really big difference. It does. Like, I'm already seeing my skin change. Yes. Yeah, you need to come down and try our microgreens and our wheatgrass. Talk about high nutrition. Really yeah, like, high your place is really hard to find. It's only hard to find once. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, it'll have to be a weekend for me because I work throughout the week with the show and with this job. So yeah. it'll be a week. It'll be Whenever a week. Whenever you're ready, uh, put in your, your, your GPS 406 Cotton Street. It'll definitely be a, a life changing place. Oh yeah, we've been uh, we've been working with uh, LSU uh, Oshner with their uh, cancer patients, uh, oh. a few of the gyms. Uh, we've been doing a lot of education on broccoli microgreen. Uh, broccoli has been uh, has been studied for the good part of twenty or thirty years now, uh, and they're finding that it helps reverse the effects of chemotherapy on your skin and stomach. Uh, broccoli microgreen is also the number one heart uh, microgreen you can get. Um, and the customers, me included, but the customers that it, who I've talked with, it's not taking them weeks to get uh, uh, feel different. Uh, it's taking hours or days. Our bodies really aren't used to like clean, pure vegetables. And especially microgreens, they're tender little plants. And they've only ever been grown with water, not even fertilizer. So when they hit your body, your body uh, eats it up, spreads it out, and it goes exactly where you need right away. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I know that you said you were going to have you some tea from yeah. tonight. Well, I, I made me some tea. But, but when you come, I'll make you some as well. I make a really cool uh, lemon balm with mint and uh, Thai basil. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, sweeten it with honey. We process our own honey in the farm. Uh, Shut our the brothers. Yeah, we keep it on tap. Here, I'll, let me turn this around. I, had, I was holding this up for my phone. I'll just walk over. I can't turn my phone. We keep all of our honey on tap. So when, you, when you're ready for it, we'll pour you a bottle. Man, I'm, I'm going to have to get over there this week. Oh, yeah, come on. I'll get that over there this week. So did you use the herbs from the actual garden to make your tea? Of course. <laughs> rhetorical question, rhetorical question, just an inquiring mind. Uh, the, the pink lights are on right now, so you can't quite see them as well, but I'll show you some of the herbs that I make it with. There we go. This is lemon balm. Uh, lemon balm is an incredible plant. It smells and kind of tastes like lemon drops. Uh, yes. it's, really, it's really good for uh, indigestion, anxiety, stomach health. I, I, I use a lot of this. I have a lot of anxiety. Uh, mint. I have common mint and then mountain mint. Mountain mint is really pungent and strong and powerful. And I, I know you, it's kind of, you miss the lackluster, but uh, Thai basil is Ooh. incredible. It has a licorice smell. And uh, basil, basil and oregano are immune boosting herbs. And when we got sick and mom gave us chicken noodle soup, um, it wasn't so much that it just made us feel better because mom made it for us. The oregano in the soup would boost our immune system and we physically felt better. Uh, so when I'm getting sick or friends or family are getting sick, I'll make them that mint tea and I'll throw in a little oregano in there and that basil. 
and it takes minutes and it hits your system and it wakes everybody up and start feeling a little bit better. The science of food, friend. It's the science of food. Oh, yeah. I wasn't a foodie until I started growing it. And now I'm a big time foodie. I want clean food. Whatever you give me, I want it to be clean. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a foodie anyway because I just love to eat. But when I started figuring out, like, nah, we need to start work, looking into cleaner foods. And the older we get, the more we should be investing in stuff like that. I, I tell kids, like, y'all aren't going to listen to me, and it's okay. But when you're 30, you'll remember. If you don't eat well, you'll end up like us. Heart disease, diabetes. We don't need, those are all preventable diseases with healthy eating. How, how do you feel about just coming like to like, um, just doing like little classroom sessions? Yeah, we've done quite a few. Uh, this facility isn't really conducive for a lot of people, but about 10 people can come in at once. Uh, but I've gone to, I've gone to garden meetings. I've gone to schools, uh, uh, Lions Club. Uh, I've run a, quite a few different organizations and taught about microgreens, uh, given samples. Really what it comes down to is most of us, and me included, up until two years ago, were just ignorant of the impacts of clean food. We, That's true. We've been raised in frozen vegetables and canned foods and gas stations and quick fast food and it's all available and it's all pretty cheap but we also have these really outrageous medical bills and there's quite a few studies that show that if you eat well and pay the money to eat well up front you save a lot of back-end medical expenses amen um, i've been trying to i've been trying to live that and teach it and i, I have a i have a theory for you if you're trying to get on a, a healthy lifestyle I'm bad at rules. I don't like them. I break my own rules. Because who am I to give me a rule? I don't know me. I don't like rules. So I've learned, instead of putting restrictions on myself for diets, I add something that's really incredible. And once I get used to that one thing that's really good for me, I do a second thing. And after the second or third thing, you start taking away the carbonation and the high fructose syrup and all these things because... You're starting to feel the impacts of all the good things you're doing for yourself. And you're getting those healthy gains. So if you're, if you're on that road of betterment, don't worry about the rules so much. Just eat something really, really good tomorrow. Love that. Love that. Next question. What challenges did you overcome on your journey to starting the hydro planet? The hydro... I don't want to mess it up. Hydroponic. Hydroponic garden. Uh, which category do you want to start with? Professional or personal? There's a we lot. are going to talk about the professional. <laughs> we'll keep it straight. Personal. Uh, professional. It was a it was a challenge, and I was helped immensely by uh, not only friends in the community, uh, but by some organizations. Uh, one of the things that I did. Uh, that helped a, a lot, and a huge shout out uh, to Louisiana Startup Prize. Yes. They're awesome. They're positive. They push you to go further than you should or thought you should. So I, starting off with the Startup Prize really got me going and got me to understand the importance of setting up my business plan. I've had a few businesses throughout the years, but I never set up a business plan. I never went through the, like, the real tedious stuff that you don't want to do. This time I did it first. I had a full-blown marketing plan, financials. Uh, I did all my research. I did the startup prize. And then I started working with the EAP, the Accelerated Entrepreneur Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pitched my idea to them. They really liked it. And they brought me on as one of their businesses. And really uh, what that meant for me is it gave me uh, the resources for all of the things that I didn't know about. I am not an accountant. I don't know tax law. I don't know payroll. I don't know local ordinances. Um, I'm barely good at growing lettuce, let alone everything else. So the EAP kind of held my hand through that. and uh, So that was huge. So my recommendation to other people, um, if you're going to start a business, 
for those who are serious, and you know who you are, because you know what you're going to have to do to do it, start at the very beginning and get your business model. Get it all planned out. Because when, when you take a stack of papers to somebody and you ask them for financial advice or even investments, and when they, and they see that you've already walked the mile and you've done all the research that you possibly could do and made all the projections that your education allows, they're so much more likely to help you. And uh, that was my story. Anika Bank, they jumped in. They're a huge startup bank. Uh, they helped me uh, get my building and procure my uh, investment, my, my startup uh, capital, the EAP, Louisiana Startup Prize. And then some local businessmen downtown, they've definitely taken me under my uh, under their wing and they've shown me around. It's a community love effort. Love that, love it, love it. So the next question is, what strategies did you use first to market your business? That's a hard one too. Uh, so I've had a couple different strategies. When I started, the, when I first started doing the research and doing the startup prize, it was all conceptual, uh, so I didn't I didn't have a product. I couldn't really go to businesses to to get contracts or you know to get accounts. I didn't have anything, so I told I did what you're not supposed to do. I told everybody what I was planning to do. I told mm -hmm. them what I was going to do and what it was going to look like. And I tell you, my friend, the amount of anxiety and stress that came from that, but on the other end, it held me accountable. Because I don't like to back down. I have a little bit of pride. I want to do what I say I do. And I told every, I threw a party for 500 people when we bought the building and told them I was going to put a farm inside the building. I had to do it. If you're going to talk big and think so big, you got to That's go how big. I started. So to answer your question in two parts, I started by promising what I was going to do. And, and spreading the word locally that way. And it was all just kind of rumors and promises and they don't really stick, but it gets it going. And then once I started building, then I was fortunate enough to do some news channels and do some, you know, a, a few things like this. Uh, now, now that I'm up and running, I don't have the startup capital that I used to have anymore. Um, I don't have a, a big budget to spend on radio and billboards and it's coming that day, but right now it's word of mouth. Every single salad that I make has to be perfect. It has to be amazing. I mean, they are, but it's important to me because you're going to go tell your mom or friend or, or partner, and they're going to come. And everybody only gets one first impression. So now that we're up and rolling, it's word of mouth and impressions. And hopefully in the next year or so, our capital will be strong enough and we'll start doing uh, radio and billboards. You will. Thank you. You Thank will. You. The next question is, how do you define success? Does it make you happy and does it make the world better? Sweet and simple. Love it. You don't have to go no further. I have, before this, I was working in West Texas and I had a really great job with probably the very best company I've ever worked for. Uh, I worked for Southern Tire Mart and I was a salesman and they treated me well, they paid me even better. Uh, I was making tons of money. And I mean, for me, tons of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and one day I had a near death experience on the interstate while delivering tires and we got through it, no big deal. But something got stuck in me where I realized that at that moment in my life, if I were to have died, my customers would only have been upset for a day or two until they got a new salesman. Uh, I, it was just important to me, maybe it was the Boy Scout in me, I don't know. I wanted to leave it a little bit better than I found it. And this allows me to do that. The harder I work, the better off my community is. And I really like that. I love that. You're, people like you are well, the reason why I do the show. Thank you. Now, I want to... I want to put them in the background that they can read while we're talking to me. There we go. Is it backwards? Yep, it's backwards. I'll post it later. Uh, okay. I got this quote while I was at a convention, and really, the, the, the gist of it is, if you want to, if you want to make a difference, you have to be a dreamer, and the dreamers are the ones that change the world. 
I say that. I, I say that in a different way. This is the way I say it. Dreamers, we dream big and we think big and we do big. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's that's just me. I, I, I think big, I speak big, I do big. That's it. Um, final question, and then we're gonna move into a facility tour. Gotcha. Um, you kind of answered the question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, what's the best advice you can give someone thinking about starting a business or pursuing their dreams? You have to be really committed. It's like a marriage or a child. You can't, I mean, yeah. once you start it, you got to finish it, or at least yeah. you should. Yeah, you should definitely want to start finishing <laughs> If you don't, it's all on you. No, it, I've, uh, I've invested more money than I had and more time than I, I wanted, and I've cried and bled, and I've laid on the floor, and, but it was worth it. And uh, my, my dad always said to me when I was growing up, son, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Life, life is not supposed to be easy. Nope. No. If it was supposed to be easy, there would not be no need for us to even be here. No. No. And what would we gain from it? Nothing really. It doesn't. So... It really pays off when you put in the blood, the sweat, in the tears. It's all about the prayers and the sacrifices. Yeah. It, and how, it, how glorious is it when you stand on top of the mountain that you just climbed or the business that you just built or the family that you created and you look down like you did that. Yes. Like you remember the hard times, but you did it. Yes. That, that was how I did the, the night I did the one year anniversary show. When I did the one-year anniversary show, I, I was in that space. That's where I was. And I cried like a kid when I did yes. this. Man, I cried so much, so much. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, I actually made it a year. And how many people told you you couldn't or you shouldn't or all the reasons why or didn't show up or didn't tune in or whatever, but you did it. Well done, sir. Hi, everybody. See you here. <laughs> Thanks for the love and support. I'm Means proud of you. Keep it up. Means a lot. Means a lot. So with that being said, can you give us a tour of the city? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to jump back and forth between forward and back. And if I can make you dizzy, just tell me which direction to look. Gotcha. It all starts off with the seedling rack. We drop our little seeds in these little cubes. This is rock wool. And uh, they get growing. When they get to about this stage, let me grab one. We take it out. Uh, and ultimately, we put it in either the horizontal racks or the vertical racks. Mm -hmm. uh, our system, let me come back, You're not making me dizzy. Our system is 100% hydroponic. Uh, we circulate 500 gallons of water uh, over the course of about 10 days. I'll show you our water. Uh, my water bill is only 60 to $100 a month. Um, we're very efficient. Here's, uh, here's our, our uh, nutrient system. And this pump runs 24 hours a day. Uh, sorry for all the spills. I'm the plumber. Uh, but ultimately, we're growing plants with water, uh, nutrient, fertilizer. And then every few days, I put in a trace amount of hydrogen peroxide. And that's like brushing the root's teeth and getting them all pretty and kills bacteria. Uh, and this allows us Let's put, spin this back around to grow year round. I turned off the fan so that y'all could hear me. Uh, mm -hmm. but because we control the humidity, the temperature, the wind flow, the nutrients, we're able to grow 
beautiful plants and not have to worry about drought and sun and we still get bugs. Uh, I get a lot of aphids from people bringing them in. Um, but you know, it's ultimately with organic uh, farming, uh, you get really incredible plants when you treat them well. This is a Swiss chard. Yes. Let me come over here. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. No, you're good. Doing good. So when I built the farm, actually, this is a good, good perspective. Let me back up just a little bit. I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. So I, I built multiple platforms to grow plants. And then I experimented with them to find out which ones were economical and feasible and what conducive to this environment. So the, long story short, this area has these high pressure uh, sodium lights. And originally I built this to grow tomatoes and cucumbers. You can see the wires up there. I learned mm -hmm. very quickly that I could, but it was kind of a waste for me to grow those products indoors. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I've, I've repurposed it and I, I put some of the hardier plants. This is kale, uh, borage. Borage is a really cool plant. It has a purple flower that tastes like cucumbers. Mm -hmm. uh, then I built a bunch of the vertical towers and uh, this, I pump the water and it drips down the back end of the tower and it drains into the drainage system and returns back to the fertilizer tank. And then the final setup I made was horizontally stacked. Uh, these are the horizontal uh, racks and actually they can go one more higher, uh, but I've learned something uh, with doing uh, urban farming. When you farm like this, not only do you have to build uh, structures that are conducive for the plants that they grow but you have to build structures that are conducive for harvest yes. and by stacking it too high it then requires additional equipment there's safety concerns so uh in in short i've learned that these towers uh are one of the best uh, devices i have for growing and actually we're we're really fortunate we're about to do an expansion and put in put in two more rows of towers and put in some more microgreens. Now I'll show you our microgreen rack. Sorry for the wind. I have a fan on. I'm going to do, I'll Sorry. try to get a little bit closer and I'll spin it around so you can see it. So this is a, my microgreen rack. Uh, we have carrots uh, and cabbage. I'm using pink light, so it kind of takes away all the colors. Uh, basils and peas. Uh, wheatgrass. Nice. So I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be adding hopefully two more of these this year and more lettuce racks. And we're just building out, learning how to uh, optimize my square footage. Uh, actually, Louisiana farmers taught me this. You only have so much land. You only have so many square inches in your building. Like, are you wasting it? And if you are, why are you wasting it? And how can you profit from that waste? Um, I've learned that Louisiana farmers are happy to accommodate just about anybody and they're, they want to do deals and they want you to do things on their property, but it has to bring them money. That's all they got. That, that is their company. And mm -hmm. I've learned that with Cotton Street Farms is now that we're up and running and we know how to operate, we're going through and we're finding all the efficiencies and all the, the wasted space and uh, we're going to start filling those up and grow more and more plants. When it's, the building is fully built, um, if able to sell it all, it's able to produce a million dollars a year in revenue. That's a lot of lettuce and microgreens. Nice, nice. Uh, another thing that we do, and I'll mention real fast before we get off, uh, I, this is all the stuff that I grow year round and we always have lettuces and kales and shards and microgreens and wheatgrass. Uh, but in the summertime, we collaborate with local farmers and we bring in, uh, sustainable produce. Some of the farms we work with are Scott Ryan's farm in Dixie, uh, Raccoon Bend in Bossier. Um, I work with Papa's uh, Garden in Mooringsport. He's a hydroponic farmer. Um, I'm actually bringing in his, the lights are weird, so I'm sorry you can't really see him, but his uh, hydroponic organic tomatoes and cucumbers nice. are now year round. We'll always have these. 
and in the next couple uh, days and weeks, this whole wall will be filled with local produce, watermelons and corn, cantaloupe, peas, okra, all the summer produce. So will uh, you be selling your produce at the farmer's market here? Uh, no, but I'm only one block away. So when you get hot and sweaty, come over here and cool off, and I'll have everything else that you didn't get. Nice. Okay. Okay. I love it. Thank you. It's, cool. it's, been, a, it's been an adventure. I, it seems like it have. I, I, I literally saw the interview on the news, I want to say, within the last six months. And when I saw the interview, I was like, I'm going to work my due diligence to get him on a little tea time. What you are doing is some cool shit. It is some definite state of the art shit. And we need to see more innovation like that. We need to continue to see more innovation. Well, maybe, uh, maybe we can do a night, a tea time night, and have some of your artists come down and bring in the, the community and do things tea time wise, tea time way. All right, got to get with the production team. We'll, we'll set it up. Well, here's your invite. Whenever you're ready. We'll definitely get. Hey, CJ, if you're watching, you've been booked. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, we are going to move into candy or corn, my game for a little tea time. I am going to ask you about some candies. You can say candy if you'll eat the candy or corn if you will not eat the candy. Because I won't eat candy corn. That's disgusting. <laughs> well, you just wait. You just wait. The first candy is Gobstopper. Corn. 100 grand. I mean, just for the good karma, I'll eat it. <laughs> candy corn. No, 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 get out of here. I did not approve of that question. <laughs> the next candy is Rolo. Yes, yes, but I can never get them out of my teeth. Heath Bar. What? Wait, say it again. Heath Bar. Heath Bar? Heath. Yeah. Yeah, Heath I'll bar. eat it. Okay. Mike and Ike's. I don't really like them, but because they have my name on them, I always eat them. Next candy is Mounds. Yes. With almonds. Okay. So you, you want the almond joy. Gotcha. The next candy is Skittles. Yeah. That's fine. Twix. Yeah. Yes. And the final candy is gummy bears. Oh yeah. Yeah. Got it. So gummy that bears. Is, that's candy or corn. Thank <laughs> no, for forget that. I don't know why we're even making it. It's it's that's just the game. It's it's a it's a game that I play just to change the vibe a little bit. I if, love the it. if the interviews are deep and heavy, we have to change the vibe and bring it back up. I think I'm going to buy a, a, a dish and put a bunch of candy corn in it for you. When you come to me, you'll have to. Negative. He does not like candy corn. <laughs> Nobody does. No, you can melt that and put that back in the ground. All right. But again, I have to thank you for coming out tonight, for doing a little tea time. I'm definitely going to set up a, a day to come out and hang out at the facility. And um, we're going to definitely work on getting um, the production team in, and we're going to work on filming on location. Cool. I'm down. I'll have and to out I, everybody. I'm with that. I think I think I got to – I'm going to call my production team and speak with him tonight. I'm not even gonna wait. And uh, we're we're gonna were wondering what I was eating. That's what I've been snacking on while we were talking. Ooh, cucumber. Harice Daniels. I'm gonna do a shout out for Harice. Simply delicious. It's backwards. I apologize, but uh, this is the most incredible ranch. Uh, she's actually going down to New Orleans this month for the Essence. 
And she'll have a booth down there. I'm really proud yeah. of her. Yeah, if if I could get down to Essence this year, I would. But it's the timing. Just the timing. Yeah, it's a commitment. Oh yeah, because that, that you got to plan that early. Mm-hmm. You got to book that like five months out. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're they're not they're not cheap either. Yeah, you no. down, make a big splash for Shreveport and represent us. Really proud. Definitely. Of her. Definitely. I love it. My mom is now finally tuning in. This was the episode that she should have been watching from the beginning. Well, she'll but catch up. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Thanks for tuning in. You definitely want to go back and watch this one from the beginning, Mom. Definitely want to go back and watch this one from the beginning. But again, thank you, Mr. Michael Billings, for coming through tonight. It has been a pleasure and an honor to have you here on a little tea time. We are definitely going to get you back on. Definitely going to get you back on. And we're going to definitely make it happen. Like, I'm literally finna get off and I'm finna FaceTime him. Like, look, we got to we gotta give him Michael Billings. Period. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have fun. I'm down. I absolutely love your energy. You I got, love you got to invite you your mom. That way she can hang out with us. She won't be late this time. <laughs> Darling, you're invited. You're my guest. Don't let don't let your son bully you around. Come on. I'm not I'm not gonna do anything. This is all on her. She has her <laughs> own transportation. She can get there. She she actually has an she actually has an open day, so she can go in any time. I work during the day, so I'm not able to come during the day, but weekends are my time. Well, she's invited anytime. I love that. So mom, you heard him. You can come. But that's gonna be on your time. I'm not. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun. Uh, we'll take pictures and send it to you. <laughs> yeah, she gonna love that. She loved it. I did that already. <laughs> Thank you so much. You definitely are welcome back to a little tea time. Um, and we're gonna definitely get get books to come in and hang out. And you're cool. gonna probably see me before we do that. I hope so. So give me give me a couple of days, cause the weekends it's upon us, but still a little early. Yeah, take Just, your time. I'll be here growing. Yeah, as you as you should. <laughs> um, I appreciate you so much, man. It was really cool, really cool. You're doing something amazing, and when you when I come across people that are doing something amazing, I have to shout them out on a little tea time. Thank you. It means the world to me. Thank you, because the city now knows. Even more now. About who now, the city's pretty are. cool. It's growing. We got a cool city. I'm proud of it. We're making big changes. And yes. it's hard, but we're making them. I've said, I think I've said it in other groups that I hang out in and in other interviews. It's going to be up to us, the artists. The, the the business owners, the millennials. Yeah, we're gonna, we can't complain anymore. We're the ones making the decisions. Yeah, we're going to have to fix the mess. If, if it stays messed up, we're the assholes. Yeah, so we are, it's up to us to fix the mess. So don't complain. If you're not bringing solutions to the table, bring the solutions. Yes. All we can do is plant seeds, fertilize, water and watch them grow and enjoy it and enjoy the harvest the harvest with that being said i gotta let you go because i gotta wrap things up here with a little tea time but it has been very awesome hanging out with you and i can't wait to come over there and give me some of that tea man it's good man really good i'm sure i'm sure because you are definitely in a great place for it thank you so for my place here at a little time to your place there where all the organic greens and herbs are have a great one i will definitely be in contact happy tea time my friend have a great one boss take care bye-bye okay y'all that was a great show god damn it that was a great show Y'all saw some state of the art shit. State of the art shit. Okay. 
it, it, it really, this, this is a good show tonight. I enjoyed this so much that I am going to make it my business to get by to Cotton Street Farms. So y'all get to Cotton Street Farms and check out what they're doing. It benefits the city and it benefits us as a whole. So y'all get by Cotton Street Farms, 406 Cotton Street, and check out what they are working on over there. Shout outs again to Mr. Michael Billings for having the opportunity to just come in and hang out with me tonight here on a little time on a little tea time and for giving me an opportunity to just talk about what he's doing over there and he's doing an amazing fucking job so y'all just stay tuned for what more that he's going to continue to bring to the city and with that being said let's remember i need you guys to get over to saucy spices.com and use my coupon code a little tea time one word and receive five percent off of your purchases when you shop at saucy spices.com and you can also check out her cookbook the chef saucy spy ass cookbook available right now on the website at saucy spices.com while you're at that feel free to check out my books the jari's dion brand it's 421 lake street at agora borellis i'm just telling that jarek sent you when you go by or Jarius Dion, tell them that um, I sent you back. And y'all can also check out my books at Amazon.com. Just type search Jarius, J R A Y I S, Dion, D E Y O N D, and check out the books there. Thank you to everyone who supports the books. Thank you to everyone who takes out their time to watch a little tea time. Thank you to all of the guests who have been coming through. Um, as well, y'all can also check me out on TikTok at the Jarius Dion. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Jarek, a King Among Men, Thomas. And you can also listen to a little tea time on Spotify at a little tea time on Spotify. With that being said, I definitely would love to encourage you guys if you know other artists. Or business owners out there looking to promote their brands or talk about what it is that they're doing and they're willing to have an interview done here on the little tea time have them contact me here in my inbox or have them email me at jarek thomas 27 at yahoo.com and we can get them booked here on a little tea time um, remember the show's quote opportunities knocking you matter. Let's build and go high in Shreveport. And as I say after every single show, remember to be great on purpose and not by accident. The future is now. I am your host, Jarek, a.k.a. Jarius D, your favorite published author's favorite published author, and your host of A Little Tea Time. Until the next show, you guys enjoy your Tuesday. Be well. Stay well and be blessed. Welcome to the little Y'all ready? Welcome to the little Oh yeah. Welcome to the little Who listen? Welcome to the little All right. Welcome to the little Welcome to the little Welcome to the little Hi, Mom. I love you. Good night.